Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby release the hounds. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. That's not a knife. That is a knife. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 60th podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode number 60. Holy crap. What? Episode 60? Are you serious? (laughs) What? 60. Can that be right? That's insane. As we've mentioned before, Webby, you, you you thought we'd get to how many? Eight? Six? Seven. Yeah, I w- yeah, I thought we would be very, very lucky if we ever got to 10. And uh, <laughs> geez, here we are, episode 60. Crazy. That's right. We have an amazing show for you guys tonight. We have a very special guest. And guess what? We are live what? on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And we are mm-hmm. live on Twitch. And this show is really meant to be interactive. So if you have questions or comments for us or for our guests throughout the evening, Make sure you throw them in the chat, and uh, if they're good, we might be able to talk about it, right, Webby? That is correct, and not only do we have an awesome guest tonight, uh, we are also going to be debuting part six of the coaching session I had with Daniel J. Howard. We have some huge news regarding a special match that will be happening in the near future involving yours truly and this kid that goes by the name Ben Johns, Uh, and we'll be announcing a pretty epic giveaway that we'll be doing uh can you believe all of that it's gonna be epic we're not gonna be doing thinking around with eddie and webby tonight though because we got such a late start it's almost my bedtime as it is so uh, (laughs) right we'll not be doing that but we have plenty of good stuff but before we get to any of that webby what's going on in twitter oh man twitter has been going off the hook lately and uh, i'm gonna pull, pull twitter up right now and see what's going on on the twitter sphere uh here is a comment here from ryan z crest he says the pros asking pros questions segment during the eddie and webby podcast has been amazing they should really have more of that and much less eddie and webby <laughs> well, uh, thanks i guess <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's nice, but it's also kind of a backhanded compliment, too. So thanks, for right. that, I guess. Yeah. 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 We appreciate all feedback. Uh, anyway, so let's go on to another comment. Here's one from uh, Jeannie from The Block. Eddie and Webby, I am so glad you had Wes Gabrielson on your show. He's a super nice guy and an excellent pickleball player. It was great learning more about him. Very nice. Thanks for that. And uh, I agree. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, super fun episode. Awesome getting to learn more about him. Uh, Let's do one more comment here on Twitter. Here's one from Bill Morey. He says, what is the deal with that ridiculous trick shot video Eddie and Webby recently posted? Are we supposed to take that seriously? Um, Yeah, you are supposed to take that seriously. I mean, it was uh, we we poured our heart and souls into that video. We did the uh, the slickest trick shots we could possibly come up with. And uh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Those were the slickest tricks you've ever seen in pickleball. So I don't know what he's talking about, Bill. Right. And if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, if you check out our YouTube channel, uh, we released Slick Tricks Volume 1 recently, and uh, it's taking the pickleball world by storm. So <laughs> do, right. yourself, do yourself a favor and watch that video. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but I say we get right into the action, get into what everybody really wants to see, and that is tonight's special guest what do you think i think that sounds good oh man i am very excited to talk to today's guest he is a very well-known and loved individual in the pickleball world he is a very skilled pro level player and instructor he has a really nice australian accent and he has coached coached some of the, the some extremely successful pickleball players such as tyson mcguffin and he can even help coach you 
with his new pickleball coaching program known as Coach Me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show, Mr. Morgan Evans. Hello, sir. How's it going? G'day, G'day fellas. How are you? G'day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. This is awesome. Uh, going to be a very fun night. Um, Pleasure to we be were, here. Uh, very nice. We were fortunate enough to have you grace us with your presence during episode 43 of the podcast when we were broadcasting live on location at Perrin Brewing Company uh, during the 2019 Beer City Open Welcome Party. Uh, but it was it was kind of a crazy night that night. We had a lot going on, uh, just craziness all over the place. So I'm glad that you were uh, gracious enough to join us again tonight in this more intimate setting. We can have a more intimate conversation. So thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, I um, I heard about that night and I was young and impressionable. I really didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, <laughs> but obviously since then, I have done my research and came up with an educated choice to be back on the show. So look, it's, a, it's an exciting time to be alive, really, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. And I appreciate the fact that you're here with us. Um, so pretty much every time I interview a pro level player, one of the first questions I ask is how they first got into pickleball, but we like to mix things up here. We don't want to do the same old thing every single time. Um, and we don't, don't want things to get stale and predictable. Uh, I don't, but to be honest, I, I don't really feel like mixing things up. So can you please just tell us how you first got into pickleball? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, so I moved to America in the beginning of 2014. Um, I was teaching tennis at a nice resort in Palm Desert. Uh, my brother is the director there, and uh, he had played a little bit of pickleball. A bunch of the other pros around the desert um, had played a little bit, just a couple of games here and there, but enough to you know show me the ropes. Um, so I went out. Marcin Rospetsky, the uh, the Polish monster, was one of the guys that um, started at the same time. So that was always fun. Um, and then I guess that summer, 2014, I moved to Seattle to teach tennis, um, and I reached out to, actually it was Pickleball Central. Um, I think I just Googled Pickleball in Seattle and Pickleball Central came up straight away. So I actually sent them a bunch of emails asking if they you know, knew where I could find um, some decent play. And uh, they put me in touch with a guy named Don Pascal and um, Mark Friedenberg, Yoda. The, uh, the guru. Oh, nice. And um, and they were nice enough to at least come let me come and watch. So I watched a couple of sessions with these guys, Chris Miller and uh, Brian Ashworth. If you haven't had Brian Ashworth on the show, then I'm not sure you're uh, you're going to make it. You got to get him on. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had Absolutely. him yet, but we definitely would. We definitely like to have him, uh, especially now that we uh, we released competition to the whole sick tricks thing that's going on. We've got slick tricks here on our end. I think. Uh, unfortunately, I hate to say it. I think. I think we're going to make sick tricks obsolete. You, uh, so I really? feel bad about that, but you never know. <laughs> wow. That's, those are bold words. I, I look forward to seeing how slick your slick tricks are. Oh, they're, they're pretty slick. They're pretty, 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 slick. pretty, pretty slick. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so I spent the summer in Seattle, uh, playing with those guys and, um, getting beaten up a lot. Moved back to Palm Desert and just kept playing with Marson, um, Scott Burr, Kim Jade, and a few other misfits, and the rest is history, so to speak. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, you, you talked about um, Mark Friedenberg. I actually got to meet him recently for the first time at last year's Great Lakes Regionals Tournament. It was, that was very cool. I was a, a total fanboy, and I had him autograph his book that he was selling. So, but oh, yeah, that was a. Nice. Pretty cool experience. Like, and I heard um, through the grapevine that he's a huge fan of yours as well. Oh, nice! Yeah, I, I, I was. Uh, I heard that like we, we were we were his inspiration for most yeah. of his his success. Yeah. <laughs> he he said in one of his books, I think he said you guys were in the in his top ten pickleball podcasts, um, and I think that's just really sweet. <laughs> nice, very nice. Um, so I have to apologize, Morgan, but I'm 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 feeling kind of tense tonight. Um. I really need something to help loosen me up. So I think before we continue the interview, I think now would be a great time to crack open some adult beverages, if you don't mind. Hey, I, I was clearly slightly ahead of you there. So I'm um, sorry, I jumped the gun. But <laughs> oh, that's all good. It's that's all good. Uh, you know, 5.40 my time, so I was due. Oh, very much so, very much so. So what, what are you drinking there tonight? 
Uh, so this is an Elysian space dust. Um, and oh, nice. so we're all clear. They are not paying me for this shout out, but I'm just <laughs> right. a huge fan. Um, and I yeah. actually live about 150 yards from a CVS pharmacy. And oddly enough, you can you can buy that there. I think that's really strange that you can get space <laughs> dust from a, a pharmacy. But anyway, I love it. Nice. Yeah, we we actually drank that uh, during the show quite a while ago, and uh, I enjoy it. That's a that's a very tasty beverage. Oh, it's a tasty and, beverage, uh, isn't it? It's lovely. Very, very tasty. And uh, something we like to do on the show from time to time is try something that we've never had before. Um, so. Mm. I am going to reveal the beer. I will be drinking something I've never had. I've always heard great things. And oh, this is called uh, Premium Ale from Foster's. Have you ever heard of that oh, one? No. No, <laughs> uh, I had to do this it. This is why you didn't tell me what any of this stuff was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's, exa Foster's. that's exactly why. Before the show, Morgan oh. asked what we'll be drinking tonight. And I was like, eh, don't worry about that. Yeah. We'll reveal it during the show. <laughs> but what's crazy, oh like... God. Look at the size of this can. I mean, this can is huge. Like it's here's a like for size comparison. Here's a, a regular can compared to this can. It's like taller mm -hmm. and fatter, <laughs> and it's just I've, I've never seen a can quite this size before. Yeah. That but, uh, what about you, Eddie? What do you got, Eddie? Well, so since you went with the Foster's Ale, I had to go with the Foster's oh Lager. And I can honestly say I have never had Foster's before, but I've heard a rumor that Americans think this is what Australians drink, but it's not true. Can you confirm or deny that for us, Morgan? I can confirm that. Yeah, yeah. it's not. Um, it's not our finest offering, and I apologize if any of the good people in the Foster's Brewing Company are listening. Um, I would still love a, a Foster's sponsorship, and I will tell everybody how amazing your beer is, but. <laughs> In all honesty, Australian yeah. for cat piss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cold cat piss, now, but still. Yeah. Cold now, do you have a preference over the uh, the ale or the uh, the lager? I I I went through a long a, a real phase of pale ales. Um, Australia does make some good pale ales. Cooper's is a lovely, lovely crisp pale ale. Um, but then, yeah, when I got here, I, I started to um, get into some of the the craft beers and uh, and then IPAs. And now I'm I'm a kind of I think Tyson McGuffin. I blame Tyson for getting me into hazy IPAs. Um, the space dust isn't isn't hazy, but it's still lovely. So yes, that's kind of I where I'm at the moment. But I, I'm not an exclusive beer drinker. You know, if I had my choice, then uh, probably Chimay Blue. Um, a Belgian premium kind of ale. It's, um, excuse me, would be all day, every day. I mean, not all day, obviously. I'm not one of those kind of drinkers, <laughs> but um, <laughs> mid afternoon, we'll call it. Uh, yeah, that would be nice, but I don't discriminate. Nice. Wine, I'm a, I'm a, a wine um, Sauvignon Blanc or uh, Cabernet Sauvignon kind of fan as well. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so I've had a few sips of this, um, and I've got to admit, uh, I probably won't be buying it regularly. Uh, I hate to say, um, it's, I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's drinkable. I mean, I'll, I'll drink the rest of it. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I might switch to something else yeah. before I'm done with the entire can, but, uh, what are you thinking, Eddie? Have you tried yours yet? Uh, I, yeah, there's nothing really much to write home about, to be honest with you. It tastes like a standard lager. Um, I would put this up there with Budweiser, maybe a little bit more multi forward right, right. type it's, of it's not great but let's not go crazy yeah i'm just uh, it's not <laughs> yeah it's not the top of the list for it's me. not it's it's not bud light territory come on <laughs> it's not cord light territory it's not Michelob ultra it's still you know it's still australian come on yeah. give us a chance <laughs> yeah it's um, not, but yes it's not, it's not great nothing to write home about crown light right. that was always my favorite growing up that was a lovely aussie beer they were, they were nice. Beautiful. All right. Well, uh, so let's get right back into the interview, the the thing that people are actually mm -hmm. interested in hearing about. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm interested in learning about your background. Can you tell us a bit about uh, like where you were born and where you were raised growing up? Um, yeah, born in a soup kitchen in Missouri, actually. Um, 
it's different, but uh, yeah, moved pretty quickly from there. Um, no, I actually wasn't born in a soup kitchen in Missouri. Um, I was born in a area called Farnborough in uh, the UK. So uh, it was an hour or two outside of London. Um, and I lived there until I was about four and a half and then moved to Australia with um, La Familia. Obviously, I say I wouldn't, wouldn't go alone. That would be pretty scary for a four-year-old. So I went with the family and um, proceeded to try my best over the next 20 years to develop uh, an adorable Australian accent as opposed to a horrible <laughs> British one. Who knew that Americans <laughs> seem to like both of them pretty well anyway. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a great accent you have there. I feel like part of me just wants to just have you just run with this whole thing yourself without me asking any questions, just to see what happens. But um, I do have I do have a couple yeah, questions I want to ask that. you still. <laughs> um, so. So when you were in Australia, is it is it really common to encounter a bunch of deadly creatures on a daily basis or is that just another thing that the mainstream media blows out of proportion? Uh, yes, that the second one, definitely. Um, look, the, the hard part is the facts are fairly um, stacked in favor of, well, apparently the stat I heard was um, approximately one in three tourists uh, last week, you know, at best. And they're just, yeah, snakes, spiders, crocodiles, um, rogue kangaroos, uh, koala bears, drop bears. Jeez, have you, have you, I don't know if you've heard of the drop bear epidemic that's happening. Have you heard of that? The drop bear? I drop did not say I've yeah. heard about that. No. Okay. What's so that all about? You can, you can imagine a, a koala bear, right? Okay. All right. Okay. So just think a bigger, at least at least twice the size, maybe three times the size of a koala bear, a bigger, meaner koala bear that kind of they hang out in trees in in you know well-known camping sites, and they literally just wait for unsuspecting tourists to come underneath, and then they drop down from the trees, boom, and the, and you know you've lost oh, your much money. I know, <laughs> I know. Oh man, it's tragic. Yeah, a lot of people just no, drop had... them like flies. Ooh, drop, drop bears. Jeez. Yeah. I had no idea. Is it true that koala yeah. bears are actually quite vicious themselves? Because I I've been hearing that they're like not as uh, cute and cuddly as they lead on to be. They are they are incredibly lazy. I'll be honest. The, the koala bears actually sleep twenty hours a day. Um, they're awake oh, for really? about four hours, and they do not get much done. Honestly, um, very <laughs> little. You know, they don't pay any taxes. There's there's really no real workforce from coming from the koalas. They're professionally cute, and that's great, and, and that's already <laughs> really what we need them for. Um, right. They eat a, eat a lot of gum leaves, eucalyptus leaves, um, but the, the only thing, the only reason why they might seem vicious, and, you know, they're, they're going to protect their young and whatnot, but hopefully not do anything too stupid with young, uh, young koala right. bears. Um, but their, their claws are incredibly sharp, so, you know, if you, don't, if you haven't had a bear attached to you, they're still a bear. Um, they're just more cuddly than, than like a brown bear right yes grizzly those those don't seem nice <laughs> um but yeah no they're just super sharp claws so it might seem like they're upset with you and they're just trying to hold on and probably get some sleep so what uh what ultimately led to you uh deciding to move to the united states um the ins no 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 um it was mostly interpol they they didn't think they could track me in California, so this was an obvious choice. All right, that makes um, sense. Makes a lot. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, I was actually before I moved here, I was living in uh, Sardinia. Um, it's an island in the Mediterranean, um, an Italian island, and I was teaching tennis there for about uh, four or five years or so, and then um, I don't know the, the kind of lifestyle I was leading was very seasonal, moving around a lot wasn't working too well for relationships and well bank accounts for sure so i decided i wanted to settle down somewhere and i was living a kind of a, a 50 pound baggage allowance for about 10 11 years and i really wanted a big tv um I, at some point i was like I, I, I just want to i want a giant flat screen tv and they're so cheap in america so i thought i would um, give my brother a call see if i can get a job 
at uh, the resort where he was working and Bob's your uncle. Robert's your father's brother. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so you, you mentioned uh, teaching tennis. Are you still pretty heavily involved in tennis these days or are you completely devoted no. to pickleball now? Yeah, and I haven't taught tennis for probably uh, at least two, maybe, maybe three years. Um, I tried to swing a racket for the first time a couple of weeks ago and my elbow was sore for about five days. So I'm not <laughs> sure if I'm going to get back into tennis. Pickleball seems good for me. Yeah, and it seems like uh, seems like it's something we can stick with for quite a while. I see a lot of eighty somethings playing it, and they're they're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of them. It just don't don't let the hair fool you. I'm actually mid twenties at, at best. <laughs> nice. So Eddie, uh, what's going on on the social media there? Well, I, I don't want to interrupt. I, I think where Morgan was going with the story was awesome, but there's so much stuff going on in social media that I feel like I had to jump in here and start sharing this. Uh, so uh, let's start here. If it's here. about the pants. <laughs> no, it's no, about the pants, isn't it? No pants okay, comments right. yet here. Uh, oh, but the first great. comment is from Rodney Langley. It says, Morgan Evans is Ooh. one of the funniest dudes in the oh. game. Love listening to Selkirk on serve and when he does commentary. Uh, good old Rodney. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Got a nice. question. And I agree. I, I, yep. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I love the, uh, the Selkirk on serve podcast that you do. And I was actually going to, I was curious, are you going to be doing any more of those coming up? Do you have any future episodes planned? Uh, yeah, well, we're actually um, going to be mixing it up a little bit. So we're just sort of, um, trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, I okay. don't want to give away too much, but, uh, we're, we're excited about where where it's heading. Um, and when you can see this giant, lovely microphone here, you know, that's not a coincidence. I don't, I don't just, you know, order these things in case Eddie and Webby want me on the show. Um, so hopefully everybody's <laughs> enjoying the audio quality of this incredible broadcast. I definitely am. For sure. Okay, what time is it in Australia? Yes. Well, it depends which side of Australia you're talking. Um, uh, Eastern Eastern states right now is probably around about uh, midday, I think, something like that. Uh, maybe a little earlier. So yeah, so it's tomorrow anyway. The great the great thing about going to Australia, well, if when you come back from Australia, you could leave, you know, uh, say the twenty first of February and you'll be back on the 21st of February, maybe even before you left. So, you know, you're essentially um, uh, time traveling, which is fantastic. Be kind of a mind trip to think about that. Right. Oh, like I yeah. leave and I get back home yesterday. It's crazy. Huh. Nuts. Boom. Mind yeah. blown. <laughs> Got a comment here from Steve Kennedy. He says, Oh, Steve Kennedy. <laughs> Morgan looks like Stevie Wonder. Ha! I don't know if Steve's actually uh, seen a photo of Stevie Wonder. I feel like <laughs> he has more of a year-round tan than than me. Uh, unless I'm confusing him with someone else, but I think I think I know who he's talking about, and it might be to do with the glasses. Steve, don't you think the other guys look like Stevie Wonder as well? Right, right. I thought this I was agree. the uniform. You know. <laughs> it is no you pulled it off i love it <laughs> i love it you have to try put in your best foot i got one more question i want to share here and and webby sorry if you had this for something to talk about here in the near future but uh it's another question from our buddy tony uh, i'm gonna butcher it. rowan i hope i'm saying that right he asked how is the biz going with coach me these videos are pretty slick well done on them Thank you, Tony. It's going great so far. We were um, really blown away by the reception and uh, and the signups in the first month and a half or so. So we've got approximately uh, fourteen point seven million signups, um, which is understandably a little more than I, I thought. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to retire. I've picked out a yacht and I'm literally just going to sail around the world for the next ten years. It's brilliant. Thank you, Tony. Nice. No, um, we obviously haven't quite reached that number yet, but um, we didn't have any expectations going into it. 
and we certainly met those expectations. So it's a win. Uh, right now, I'm hard at work uh, writing new material, new um, new lesson plans, scripts. Uh, while Steve, my uh, Steve Taylor, my partner in crime for this, is uh, editing previously shot footage and getting ready to release. So all our subscribers have more things to work on. Very nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love the idea. And uh, the Shame name is brilliant. Oh, there we go. There we go. There um, it is. So do you call it Coach Me or do you call it Coach M-E? No, Coach Me. You know, it's a double entendre. <laughs> that's what I figured. I think it's a Eddie said, Co Eddie yeah. said Coach M-E. So I just wanted to see if, if he yeah. just butchered it. That was my sorry for putting you on. Sorry for putting you on blast, Eddie. <laughs> He's young and impressionable. Don't worry about it. No, but I think that's, I mean, it's brilliant because, I mean, uh, I don't know if you realize this, Morgan, but your your initials are M-E. So it works out really? perfect. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, all this time, I, I had no idea. But now, thanks to you, you've pointed it out. Now I know. Um, brilliant. Well, that just works out even better, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and you're welcome. Man. I feel like your uh, your stocks are just going to go up even more. You've got a whole new marketing campaign you can use. No. <laughs> really? Can. No, but it, I do. I love it. As soon as I saw that you were doing that, like it, it just I thought that was brilliant. I love the name of it. I love the idea. I love the concept. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll Thank definitely so. check that out. I could definitely use some improvement. So I will uh, check it out and see you what you, know, you have to offer there. I know. It's, I mean, you, I, I have my own yeah, T-shirt yeah. that says Team Webby. You would think somebody of this caliber... Yeah wouldn't need any assistance but yeah i definitely need assistance okay well at least you're honest good man <laughs> um so we were talking about australia a little bit ago um i know the the australian open recently happened do you follow the big tennis tournaments that happen or do you not really care about that stuff uh, too much I, you know i tend to watch if aussies are playing or federer um, i'm still a big federer fan and yeah, when he's not playing as well as he might and, and hasn't really got a real, realistic chance of winning, then unfortunately I lose a little bit of interest. Um, and the Aussie Opens, it's a, it's a tough time to always want to wake up at 12.30 or stay up to 3 o'clock um, right. to watch. So, yeah, I uh, haven't been quite as engaged, but I will certainly tune in for Wimbledon and the French Open see what's going on are you a fan yeah i'll be honest uh i'll be honest my whole pretty much my entire life i've never cared at all about any of these pro tennis tournaments but getting into pickleball something about it actually like makes me a little more interested because i know a lot of people are coming from tennis into pickleball and i feel like those people uh the people that do that are they pretty much they catch on the pickleball immediately so it, something about it makes me a little more interested in tennis like being involved in pickleball makes me a little more interested in tennis than i used to be but i still don't really follow those too much like i'll read the headlines and stuff and i'll watch highlight videos and stuff but um yeah i, I do i do care about it a little more than i used to good 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 yeah look it's still you know it's still an incredible sport and the the kinds of athletes you know, anyone in the top 2,000, 5,000 or so are astonishingly good athletes that most of whom are not getting paid anywhere near um, the kind of money that uh, you can you can um, now make in pickleball. So I think we're going to get inundated uh, more and more over the next 5, 10, 20 years. Oh, yeah. I can definitely see that happening. Um, so... While we're on the topic of Australia, I do have one more Australian-related thing I want to bring up for now, and that is regarding an Australian delicacy that I've heard you talk about on other podcasts. Uh, in fact, I think I've heard you say that it is what they eat in heaven, and that is something known as Vegemite. <laughs> it's uh, something that neither Eddie, neither Eddie or myself have ever had Vegemite before. Um, so we thought well, it would yeah, be fun to get our hands on some and try it for the first time ever tonight during this oh, show. Man. So we each <laughs> acquired oh, no. some Vegemite. <laughs> so just listeners, just so we're aware, uh, so you're aware, this podcast is going to cut short around about <laughs> 10 seconds after these two try this. Oh. 
Don't smell it. Don't smell it. Oh, don't smell I, it. I did it. I already did it. Oh. Uh, I mean, I probably said heaven, but I probably meant purgatory. <laughs> you definitely said heaven. Um, I had my hopes up. Like, okay. were you being okay, sarcastic? Don't, 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 do, don't do what you're about to do, Eddie or Webby. Okay, listen to me. Put the put the spoon down. <laughs> right, put done. the spoon yeah. down. Okay, where is your toaster? Ah, oh, it's so far away. Oh, Why? Dude, Wait, so I've got I've got something now, similar. I've got a cracker. Anyway. I've got a cracker. I'm putting it on a cracker. I'm not going to do right, what right, Eddie's right. doing. Okay. In... <laughs> All right, before you put it on the cracker, before don't you, yeah. dude, listen oh, to man, me. I'm, I'm on, messing focus. everything up. <laughs> okay. Do you have any butter? Do you have any butter nearby? Uh, not nearby. I have some upstairs, but it's not close enough. It's not in reaching distance. If you put Vegemite straight on a cracker and the amount that looks like you're about to put, you know, you might <laughs> die of toxicity. The amount of vitamin B oh, that no. <laughs> will be running through your system, you'll be glowing for three days straight for a start. And that's going to look weird. Um, and I don't know if you'll survive. The, the key to <laughs> loving Vegemite is uh, a good bread, you know, I, I tend to like the sourdoughs here. Um, country white sourdoughs are nice. Don't uh, charcoal it with the with the toaster. Lather on a generous amount of butter, unsalted, unsalted. Uh, and then you put on, if, if it's your first time, a very small amount, like a fingernail kind of area of, and oh, spread man. that over as even as possible because it it'll kill you. Uh, if, if you don't oh, take man. it uh, seriously, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of scared think now. It's mostly, yeah, people think it's the animals, uh, the reptiles, the the jellyfish in Australia that will get you. Vegemite will get you too, you know. Some so, some Aussie chick oh, will man. will convince you to try it, and they'll put a bloody teaspoon of the stuff in your mouth, and you'll try and be a hero and swallow it, and uh, just end in tears. So if honestly, so if I ate this right now, you're saying that that would not yeah. it would not work out good. I mean, you'd never talk to me again, but um, hey, give it a go. What do I know? I got to try it. Doctor. All right. So I, <clears throat> I, I smeared a small amount on this cracker. I didn't do what you, uh, I didn't do the huge amount that I was going to do. So I'm going to give it a try on this cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a zinger. That's not bad. Uh, God, it's, God, all right. That's not bad. All right. I like it. Okay. It's uh, it's a lot saltier uh, than I expected. <laughs> it's it's mostly salt. It's um, <laughs> I can I can always tell when I'm a little bit dehydrated. I'll have more of a hankering for uh, toasted mm -hmm. Vegemite. Um, in Australia, people mostly it's toast, but Vegemite sandwiches, cheese and Vegemite sandwiches. Mm. Um, I can see this going really, really well with cheese for sure. The saltiness from yeah. this and kind of the savory okay. flavor with it. Oh man, I think I want to try this with like, yeah, a cheese sandwich or something like that. I think that'd be yeah. really. All right, cool. I'm going with the first cracker. The first cracker that I loaded up hardcore. I'm just doing. I'm up. going for it. All right, do it up. All right, Webby's first cracker. You heard it here, folks. What do you think? Because it hits your taste buds. Pretty I, quick. I definitely. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't enjoy it as much as Eddie does. <laughs> that's for sure. Um. Between the Fosters and the Vegemite, this hasn't been a culinary delight for you. Two, <laughs> no, so this is the. This has not been one of the best nights as far as um, things on my taste buds tonight. Well, I could have, I could have sent you my sausage roll recipe, and you could have made Australian sausage rolls, and I could have advised you on a decent Australian beer. There's a lot of great beers in Australia, but eh, Fosters isn't one of them. Mm. Yeah. So the the first cracker. The one where I had like a very little bit on was way better than that one I just ate with a lot of it on there. And uh, I have yeah, a feeling that's probably jelly. that's probably my last uh, that's probably my last right. Vegemite experience. It was uh, it? it was a good experiment, but uh, and I'm and to help uh, recover, I'm going to pour my backup beer right now and try to try to recover. Uh, and oh, kind of this is uh, this is from Shorts Brewery. This is called Mule Beer. Yum! Oh, I had that. And I've, yeah, I've actually you had this before. I, I I enjoy it a lot. It's if you like Moscow mules, this is a great beer for you. It's it tastes very really very similar to a Moscow mule. Yeah. So so it's got some ginger beer in it, or a ginger flavor. Yeah, a def mule is definitely definitely ginger flavor. It's definitely gingery. Um, I don't know for sure if it actually has ginger beer in it, but it's very gingery and um, yeah. a little hint of lime 
and uh, yeah i enjoy it very much and uh it's a uh, it's uh definitely helping get rid of the the vegemite flavor in my mouth right now <laughs> okay but well, i'm glad you didn't use the fosters to get rid of the vegemite or the vegemite to get rid of the fosters ah uh, there we go i just pounded the whole can <laughs> because i needed something well, to Jane. to save me from that <laughs> Yeah. So hopefully, Anna oh, yeah. isn't taking notes right now. That was uh, that was a very interesting experience. I could see like in small doses, I could see people possibly liking Vegemite. Um, but <laughs> the, yeah, that that second if, cracker if I did with the, with the big amount, <laughs> not recommended. If you do it, if you do it the way I I told you, like nice toasted bread, plenty of butter, and a thin layer of Vegemite. Oh, it's just bloody brilliant. I had some this right. morning. I could, mm. I could see that. <clears throat> so yeah, my I feel like my vocal cords, my mouth, it's it's still recovering. So I feel like it's a good time to take a break from me asking questions. I think now is a mm. perfect time to get to a segment that we call pros asking pros questions. And uh, oh, it's a segment that we recently started doing. It's a uh, it, we've only done it a couple times, but it has already become a very popular segment and uh we got some great submissions for today. And uh, are you ready for this, Morgan? I am clearly not ready. Um, but <laughs> I will make something up and uh, hopefully skate by here. So sure enough, fire away. All right. So this first one comes from somebody who made a huge impact in the pickleball world in 2019 and was also your partner for part of the year. And that person is the one and only Jesse Irvin. Oh my god. Hey Morgan, Jesse Irvin here. I have a question for you. I know you like to use the term shake and bake for the drive and poach combo. I was wondering, do you have any other nifty lingo for pickleball plays? Great question. Well, well there you go. Oh my god. Um <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh thank you. Jesse, that was a oh, that was well rehearsed. She did well with that, didn't she? She nailed it. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, she did did very well. Very well. God, that's better than most of my uh, Coach Me Pickleball videos. I've got to get her on that. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, I have. Uh, well, my most. Um, the one I like to use the most is probably it's called the slippery nipple. Um, <laughs> and it's essentially a. It's essentially a kind of a, a look away, leave the paddle behind while you try and sell the idea that you're going cross court with a dink while you just kind of leave things behind and uh, attack the person down the line. It, it literally, it's uh, 60% of the time, it, it works every time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's actually, it's getting harder and harder to pull that off. But uh, the, yeah, the slippery nipple is one of them. That's great. Um, I also have the 007, uh, the Golden Bowler, uh, the Golden Stroller, uh, the Look See Do. Mm. Oh, the Reverse Plumber's Crack. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, what? The, so the she electric, mentioned the electric Oh, nice. So she mentioned the shake and bake. Do you mind elaborating uh, on what exactly the shake and bake is? Yes, I I, I feel that it was essentially a um, kind of like a, a well-contained sort of breadcrumb mixture that was sold during the 70s. Uh, and you would kind of put a chicken or something inside this bag of breadcrumbs. And you would shake it and then you would bake it. And they had an advert using shake and bake, and then, um, and then about uh, I don't know, probably thirty five, forty years later, um, an incredible movie came out known as uh, Talladega Nights: The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, one of the greatest movies of all time. I think we can all agree. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, just a real you know coming of age classic, zero to hero tale. And uh, and the protagonists had a, a collective shake and bake maneuver, and um, you know that movie just really it really hit home hard for me, and um, yeah, so I essentially just stole that during the uh, Lamaster Davison Classic in two thousand, I think 
2015 with Marcin Rospetsky. He was my partner and we were getting out dinked by literally everybody. There were kids in the parking lot out dinking us. Um, and so we decided, all right, if we're going to lose, we better lose going out swinging. So we decided, given that he is like 14 inches taller than me and wildly more skilled and athletic, that I would be the one that just smashes the ball and he goes in there and does the uh, difficult stuff like poaching and putting away volleys and then putting away another volleys and then running over to the other side of the court when I couldn't reach something and then trying to put that ball away. And that became the, uh, the shake and bake. Very nice. I dig it. <laughs> um, so before we go to the next one, I actually need to brag about how awesome my wife is because she she was listening to the show and she brought me a piece of toast with butter so I can <gasps> oh, <laughs> experience oh Vegemite the way it was intended. However, I don't know. Does that mean that she really loves me or does that mean that she's angry with me because that means I need to try Vegemite again? <laughs> uh, well, good question. Um, I would say just to be sure, um, marry her again. Um, that would be nice. That would be a nice thing to do. Um, and then, yes, no, you can you can take it both ways there. So either she's definitely not going to feed you anything in the morning and she's just giving you a piece of bread because <laughs> you're not going to get any breakfast, um, or she actually genuinely has some kind of affection for you. All right. All right. So um, we're going to do the next question real soon. So while that question, uh, while that video is playing, I will put some more Vegemite on this piece of toast. I will get my uh, second uh, mule beer poured and ready to go. Right. Um, but <laughs> so let's go to the uh, the second question. The uh, The segment is called pros asking pros questions. Um, but we use the word pro very loosely for this next one, <laughs> because this one comes from the self-proclaimed people's champion. Mr. John Davison. Hi, Morgan. It's John Davison here. You might be wondering why I'm asking a question since it's pro players only, but I've won $80 playing professional pickleball, so I'm qualified. Um, I have two questions for you. One, I want to know how you're feeling. I know you just went through a recent breakup with Tyson. You left you for another man, and I just want to know how you're getting by, how you're, how you're feeling. Um, I'm here for you. Two, I know it's soon, but I think we should uh, go on our first date and play in a tournament together. I mean, solely based on the fact that my legs are more jacked than Tyson's and I'm overall better looking, um, I think we can really make them jealous. We might not win any games and it might be a pretty short affair, but uh, the photographers will be there. They'll be taking pictures. We will look damn good on Instagram and Facebook. He's going to come running back to you. I think we can do this. Um, let me know. You know, I, I just want you to know that I'm okay with being a rebound. You know, I'm not looking for any sort of commitment. I just want to have fun with you. Um, I think we can do this. Let me know. People's champ, out. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Ah, oh, people's champ. Jeez. God, that guy, that guy. <laughs> You gotta love him. You gotta love him. I mean, oh, you really do. Yeah, I, I love John Davison. But uh, yeah, so what? What's your? What is your response to that? I, I think the uh, the world is dying to know. <laughs> Di yes, dying. Yeah, I think. You know, oh, obviously, I need you all to alert the media pretty quickly as soon as I finish this press conference. Um, <laughs> firstly, how am I feeling? I'm feeling. Uh, I'm feeling very good. I have taken about three months or so off after nationals. I haven't played a tournament, um, waiting, uh, waiting patiently for the next Maxima to come out. Um, but yeah, the Tyson and I, we had about a year and a half together or so. Um, but we had, we had talked about this year, the 2020 season, um, by the middle of last year. So this wasn't news to me. Um, he had played with with Riley Newman in a, uh, a thing in Bonita Springs, um, the Global Pickleball, uh, and he he talked to me about how it how it felt, how much she enjoyed it, and the reasons. Um, and I I talked to him a little bit about um, you know what kind of partner would would work well for him, and I think it has to be someone 
that physically wants to go all day and has and has the kind of patience that Tyson um, certainly has in, in doubles. So I think it's a it's a great fit f- with him and Riley, and they've already proven that they um, can do very well. They had uh, a good win in Hawaii um, over a, a very very good team, obviously. Um, Kyle and Ben are you know juggernauts in the game. Oh yeah. So yes, my heart is clearly broken, but um, I actually uh, this year I'm playing most of my uh, my tournaments with Andre Dayescu, uh, the big Romanian um, who did very well at nationals. So I feel like as a rebound guy, um, John, I I would certainly love to play a tournament at some point. You're not going to be my main rebound guy. I'm the kind of guy that needs you know, probably half a dozen rebound guys to really get over uh, the heartbreak of uh, of losing someone with the kind of mustache that Tyson can just randomly turn up with. God, it's just a, it's just a sexy, sexy mustache. Um, right. But, yeah, so, John, thank you for the message. I appreciate that. You're a, a kind and generous soul to, to think of me in this time of year, uh, time of need. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just shoot you an email at some point. How about that? All right. So it's not, not a yes, but you're saying there's a chance. Oh, it's a definite maybe for sure. Nice. It may be like a, like a local non-sanctioned round robin tournament, something like that, maybe. Yeah. But like my local, not, I think, I think he's in Florida somewhere. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, like a palm, <laughs> palm desert kind of local. All right. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, so his his uh, whole thing was uh, heavily uh, revolving around Tyson McGuffin. Um, so I say, why not get to the man himself and uh, see what Tyson oh, has sweet. to say? Uh, Boys, what's going on? And Morgan, what's up, my dude? First and foremost, I think Morgan's great for the sport, both on and off the court. Um, as a player and as a coach, he's been a good influence on me. Um, we've been able to win some great signing titles together, so kind of cool. Uh, we actually met uh, playing against each other back in 2016, and then that led to um, uh, him being in my corner uh, for the last couple of years, and and then I got the privilege of playing with him last year, and uh, and we were able to uh, make some magic. You know, knowing knowing the Aussie, knowing the Australian accent. Um, that, that smooth, sweet accent allows him to say some explicit R-rated stuff. I've taught a lot of camps with him. He's able to say a lot of R-rated stuff, um, uh, uh, you know, with, with campers and with fans that there's no way in hell I could ever say. Um, so I think that's pretty funny. Uh, I also think uh, he may have been in some adult films growing up. I'll check my sources, though. Um, I think one of the first stories that comes to mind is when we were playing a tournament in Concord. Um, uh, shoot, this was like two years ago. And a fan um, basically asked him if he could sign her paddle, right? And uh, Morgan basically said, um, you know, I only signed TNA. Um, obviously, he was joking. Uh, if you guys don't know Morgan, he's uh, uh, full of shit anyhow. Um, but the uh, second story is, uh, you know, he, he's, he's always kind of been the hype man, always really pumping me up and getting me going, you know, calling me the champ, calling me the people's champ. Uh, you know, kind of all of the above really get me going. And uh, I remember I was playing Kyle Yates in the finals of the U.S. Open a couple years ago, and I was down in, in game three. I called the timeout, go to the sideline, and uh, and he basically tells me that I'm much more of a man than he is, and I'm going to die on this court b- before I lose to this dude. And uh, and I'm a warrior out there, and I'm tougher. And, you know, so just, just a little added uh, testosterone boost to kind of get me going and, and, and really push me through those tough times. Anyhow, I'm all done here. Sixty uh, percent of the time, every time. <laughs> so uh, a lot to digest there. There was uh, not really a question, but just a lot of a uh, lot of uh, great tidbits of information. So what? How was your response to uh, what Tyson had to say there? <laughs> um, uh, ah, it brings back some memories. Jeez, I'm glad I've got the glasses on because the tears are just they're just flowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh god, I remember the, some of those things. Jeez, he's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good horse. He'll go all day. Um, I'm obviously a big, 
a big Tyson McGuffin fan. I've been using his paddle for the last eight months or something. Um, yeah, geez, I can't believe we've been together that long. And I probably shouldn't use the word be together, but you know, it's not like, it's not like that. We've shared a few hotel rooms, but it's all been above the waist. Don't worry. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't want Megan, I don't want Megan, his, uh, his new wife to, to worry. Yeah. There was definite bromance along the way though, for sure. Um, those were good times. Look, I love coaching Tyson. I've learned, you know, learned so much from him. A lot of people assume a coach is always doing the teaching, um, but that's certainly not the case. You, with him, um, it gave me a great, a great reason to expand my sort of horizons as a, as a coach um, and a player, you know. You, when uh, when you see the guy next to you prepared to do some of the things he's prepared to do out on the court, um, you know, it really inspires you. So, and, you know, I go back to that mustache. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> right. It's, uh, it's, oh, almost, sure. it's almost, almost like a, a budding, slightly more tan Tom Selleck, um, perhaps. <laughs> you know, and maybe like a, yeah, like a young Burt Reynolds that uh, wrestled and then got into pickleball. Yeah, I think there might be an acting career in there. You never know. I could see that. I could definitely see that. In there, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. For sure. Get him a El Camino or whatever it is. Right. Hmm. So what's going on on your end, Eddie? Oh, so much stuff coming in on social media that I just feel like I had to share. Uh, first of <laughs> all, we have a question here from Steve Taylor. And Steve wants to know, is Morgan oh, wearing that's... pants? Everybody wants to know this. Steve asked it. There it is. Come on, Steve. Steve, firstly, the important thing is Coach Me Pickleball tastes great. Just coming out of this. Um, and yes, listen, back when I'm wearing uh, jeans, look at those lovely jeans. It's very, nice. Very nice yeah. Nice, normal jeans, you know, that whole thing, that last time, one time, I forget when it was, where there were, you know, I just forgot pants and uh, it seemed to have stuck or I couldn't afford them. I forget what it was. <laughs> um, but I've since, I've made at least 25, 30 bucks over the last few years. And uh, yeah, these these jeans at uh, Ross or Marshall's or something. I think they were like fourteen ninety five. So it was definitely within my price range for a, a pair of jeans. And uh, yeah, so I am wearing pants. Thank you, Steve. Well, if pickleball doesn't work out, you can always be a pants model. Right? Could be another career choice. Or a, a lack of pants model. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, we have another very, very serious question here from another Steve. This one comes from Doesn't Steve Kennedy. Uh, and Steve Kennedy really wants to know how long your dink is. <laughs> uh, you know, on a really good day, it's 24 feet. Okay. Diagonal. Backhand to backhand. That is essentially how long that is. Yeah. On a bad day, 14 feet. Either way, it's enough. Plenty of, plenty of size there in the dink. I like that. Uh, and uh, here Thank we have you. one from uh, Matthew Gear, my buddy that I played in the U.S. Open with last year. He said, Morgan, your podcasts are the bomb. Hashtag Selkirk. Oh, yeah. The question is, is that is that a, uh, a, 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 a bit of a slap in the face for Eddie, Eddie and Webby? Has he ever said that your <laughs> podcast is the bomb? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, what do you, what do you think, Matthew? Uh, cause he's kind of like, yeah, you're right. He's coming on to ours. He's saying how great yours is, but I, I just thought it was implied. Ours was great to be honest with you. Oh, I mean, it should be, yeah, I it figured, should be in the title. Yeah. Eddie and Webby. Yeah. I figured it, just, it just, it just goes without saying that ours is great. So, <laughs> right. I mean, he just, he knows he needs to, he needs to like let you know that yours is great because you need to hear that from time to time. <laughs> Look, without it, you know, and I literally walk around to random strangers, strangers asking them uh, if they like me, my pickleball, my coaching, or my podcast, or anything. And you know, I don't, I don't stop until I get a yes. Um, that's important. <laughs> yeah, it like really three is. Starbucks. I can't go in anymore. <laughs>
All right, so we we do have one more uh, video to play for the pros asking pros questions. And this one doesn't necessarily come from a pro pickleball player, uh, but she is a true professional when it comes to live streaming, commentating, and hosting her own live pickleball shows. So this one comes from our good friend, who you might know from Live with Lauren and the No Smoke Pickleball Show. Here's Lauren McLaughlin. Hey guys, hey Eddie and Webby, hey Morgan, what's up? It's Lauren McLaughlin, aka the more distinguished half of the No Smoke Pickleball Show. Um, so Morgan, I know you've already been on our show and answered every question that you could ever answer about yourself, but I wanted to try and think of something fun, so went on the internet, uh, the web if you will, and was looking at some cool would you rather questions and I think I found a good one for you which is would you rather suddenly be elected a senator or suddenly become a CEO of a major company but you don't have any more knowledge about how to do either of those jobs than you do right now so please answer the question and explain yourself have a great show guys bye wow god that took a turn didn't it jeez yeah, it did. Wow. Okay. Suddenly a senator or suddenly a CEO of a major corporation. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with the CEO. Um, largely because I don't think I can get elected to Senate um, given uh, my birth. Yeah, maybe that's not a rule. I know it's the rule for the president, but maybe that's not. But CEO of a major corporation, I think you probably end up having more power to make change, um, either in in the organization you're running or uh, by virtue of the fact that you can sell it if you want and start something new. Um, God, that is a good question. Jeez, I, this is one of those ones I should have been read. I should have been prepared for, guys. Come on, <laughs> I could have given an educated answer. Yeah, um, that was a that was a deep question. I I was not expecting that, but uh, yeah, that was a that so was a deep, deep one. So deep. <laughs> uh jeez. Yeah, but I don't think as a senator. Um, yeah, I think I I think I would be one of those senators that you'd constantly hear about in the news, uh, because they just snuck off to some island to play pickleball with Ben Johns and Christine McGrath on some, you know, getaway. That would be the kind of uh, senator. So that's probably not best for the Senate itself. So I should probably stick to CEOing. Yeah, All right. That's my final answer. But thank you, Lauren. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Thanks, everybody. And I love the fact that Lauren still had to take her little jabs at us uh to because she said like she had yeah. you you went on their show before our show i mean she just have you ever met that's anybody true. that's like so like so nice and pleasant but at the same time just like just claws come out <laughs> like at a drop of a drop of a hat <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm really halle we, berry in the making of catwoman <laughs> yeah no, but we love we love Lauren. Lauren and Kyle are good friends of ours. We do have uh we have our differences. We have a a feud going on from time to time. Mm -hmm. But now we're uh good good friends, definitely. Just, good times. I just love what she's done with her hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of jealous of the beard she had going there. I mean, I need to I need to up my beard game for sure. You'll get it. You'll get it. Don't you worry. Just hang in there. Um, so a couple of days ago, I actually, I did a Google search for your name. I looked up Morgan Evans and I was actually very surprised to find out that you're a, a country music recording artist known for such classics as Day Drunk on Tequila. I had no idea yeah. that, uh, that you had that kind of resume. Honestly. Um, and given, you know, you can probably understand given that the name of that, um, particular single that I put out, uh, fairly recently, I hear um it's not something i remembered recording uh you know given the context the subject matter so i found out that i was a country music star uh in 
mid 2019, um, where I heard myself on the radio. Uh, I think I'd got a new card that told me what I was listening to. Um, prior to that, I had a tape deck and I thought the tape deck was cool, but, um, Turns out Sirius XM is really good. So I now know what I'm listening to. Um, and I caught myself uh, listening to a song that um, I had recorded unknowingly. Um, so I just think it was probably a very, very strong tequila. And yeah, I just uh, was put in a booth and, and tried to bec become a, a country music star. Um, and all these, these checks just arrive in the mail. It's crazy, really. <laughs> So, very nice you know once in a while i'll end up at uh, the red barn it's a it's a really just a terrible dive bar i mean it's a lovely dive bar but it's a terrible dive bar about uh, 10 minutes from my place um yeah and they they give me uh, the subject matter of that song and uh, suddenly there you go just get my boot scoot on and doing country music <laughs> starring and stuff so check it check, nice. check me out on youtube and you know, like, subscribe. I don't know. That'd be really funny if that guy actually reaches out to me. <laughs> right. But yeah. So if you, if you love country music and you love mm. Morgan Evans, you're, you're in luck because, uh, you've got a whole, uh, ca uh, a whole catalog of music out there that you might not have even known about. <laughs> big, big catalog. Apparently. Yep. I've, I've really been working hard and I think I got married to some blonde chick, uh, in the last few years. So Yeah. I, I, nice. I, honestly, I gotta, I gotta stop looking at my name on name on Google because the guy is way too good looking. And uh, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, I've I've I Googled myself and and uh, apparently I uh, I am a cage fighter in Texas. I am a very successful oh. MMA fighter in Texas. Really, congratulations! Yeah. Jeez, that's a tough yeah, thank you. living, really. Yeah, yeah I can honestly, imagine it's very tough. I don't actually look like a cage fighter per se, but I guess you could go in the bantam weight, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you, you never know. You never know. You never know. Um, right? yeah. But uh, oh man, Morgan, this has been a, a great night, super fun. I know uh, we don't want to keep you too much longer, but I do just have a couple quick questions I want to ask you before we part ways. Um, one of them being, um, other than being on the Eddie and Webby podcast, what would you say is your, uh, or one of your all-time favorite pickleball memories? Well, aside from this one, geez. Um, hmm. I actually, I really liked um, holding the Australian flag uh, during the U.S. Open flag ceremony. Um, the first, I think it was the first year, might have been the second year that of the U.S. Open. Um, that was something I, I know, I know it's just you know, a couple of hundred people gathering around. I don't know, maybe five hundred people, but uh, there was at least fifteen, twenty countries represented, and um, there weren't too many Australians around. So myself and Chad Edwards, I think, um, and maybe maybe the kids got involved. Uh, had the Australian flags and did a couple of laps and there might have been a beer or two happening. Who knows? Pretty sure I was wearing flip-flops. Um, <laughs> anyway, that, 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 that was just, you know, it's lovely. It was so, uh, it was one of the first times where I, I got the sense that pickleball was um, going to become, is and is going to only get more and more global. Um, and places like Australia are going to be represented in things like the US Open uh, and all kinds of obviously competitions coming forward. The Australian Nationals, I think, has happened twice now. My mum is the, uh, the president of the Australian Pickleball Federation. Um, so that's great. Anyway, that's my probably my favorite memory. Um, yeah. Nice. Hope that, that yeah, very cool. Question. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I just, I have one more question. I saved this one for last because I know this is probably what everybody tuning in really wants to know about Morgan Evans. And, uh, that is what are your thoughts on time travel? Do you believe in time travel? And just, just what are your, what are your overall thoughts? <laughs> overall thoughts. Okay. Um, well, I mentioned the other day, I mentioned not the other day. 
like an hour ago uh, about how you you know you fly from Australia here and you uh, you you kind of go back in time, but that's not time travel. I I actually have had a it's kind of like a pet sort of research project that I I I've been doing for maybe maybe fifteen years or so. Um, I remember watching a it was a documentary about a professor, um, a guy named Ronald L. Millet, who's the, he might still be, I don't know, I haven't checked him out for a while. The, he's the uh, professor of theoretical physics in the University of Connecticut. Anyway, he, he started trying to, to build the world's first time machine around, uh, well, I think it's about 15, maybe 20 years ago now. He's, he's going out of the while. I'm not sure he's going to get there, to be honest. But he's got the right he's got the right idea, and he's piggybacking off um, Einstein's theory of general relativity, um, and he's essentially trying to create a it's like a particle accelerator that uh, shoots a uh, a linear beam of light around the cylinder um, so fast that it can it can essentially spin a subatomic particle. Uh, at the speed required to travel through time. Anyway, the point is, if you can encode information on that particle, the idea in in and the theory in uh, in what what right now is believed in the the laws of physics is the idea that once once they are able to turn this machine on and and get the speed right, that this particle will will go back in time. The only problems come is what's called the grandfather paradox, um, whereby if this experiment works and they're able to send a particle back in time, what's going to stop them from eventually sending a person back in time? And the grandfather paradox is this thing where essentially there's no way Eddie or Webby could go back and kill their grandfather because you wouldn't be alive to do what you just did. So... Now the problem is is people trying to figure out how that it can be circumvented. Um, so there's certain people that think it's um, it's a parallel universe situation, and every decision you make, you know, splits the universe in every you know possible permutation. And what you do in this this timeline doesn't affect that time. You know, you've got to watch uh, that documentary, Back to the Future Two. You know a lot really to really get a get a feel yeah. for this um but anyway it's something it's just like a pet thing i i was a tennis coach and therefore i had a lot of time in my hands and now i'm a pickleball player and a pickleball coach and with <laughs> often equal amount of time on my hands and the, yeah you gotta do something and this is a subject that i uh, kind of like this and futurism awesome. and you know <laughs> what's uh, what's gonna happen how are we gonna how are we gonna save the world and I, time travel, right. I think, is going to be part of it in the next um, 20 or 30 years, at least in my lifetime. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. T- time travel is one of those things that like, it, it fascinates me, but it like hurts my brain to think about too much. And like growing up, Back to the Future was my source of truth for time travel. Um, mm-hmm. But recently, uh, last year, Avengers Endgame came out. And that kind of rocked my world because they had a whole different, uh, whole, different whole different reasoning, thing, or yeah. the whole, it was a whole different thing for how time travel worked. Because like it just uh, kind of like what you said, like an alternate dimension, kind of like once you go back mm. in time, it's a it's a separate reality it's as opposed to like yeah. our current reality. I mean, like how how do we know what to believe? Do we believe Back to the Future or do we believe Avengers Endgame? That there's literally probably four people on the planet that have a rough idea how it could work but the important thing is to recognize it's all relative it's all it all relates to speed um and the example that someone told told me which seemed to make sense is if you imagine say you 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 go into outer space and you're you know you're parked outside of the earth's atmosphere and you've got uh two spaceships side by side um okay and one of them turns their lights on, their high beams. Okay, the light that comes out of those light of those high beams, um, the speed of light is approximately one hundred eighty thousand miles per second. So it's pretty quick. Okay, 
So with those high beams on, if this spaceship then accelerates at half the speed of light, you would assume that the light traveling would be the speed of light plus another 90,000 miles per second. But that can't happen. It's a universal, uh, it's a universal measurement per se. Um, it's an ultimate speed. So all, what that means is all that's changing is the time it takes for that light to reach a certain distance, which uh, Einstein used that, that, uh, that example to prove the theory of um, general relativity and people have been working to either disprove it or prove it further. And eh, who knows in 50 years and we're like, no, he was wrong. We don't know. <laughs> we're just going to keep watching, you know, Michael J. Fox do his thing. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I've got to admit, I thought you were trolling me before this interview. Uh, you told me that uh, that you believe in time travel and that you've thought a lot about time travel. I thought for sure you were trolling me, but uh, you have proven that you really have put a lot of thought into time travel. So this is uh, a great learning experience tonight. What, I love it. <laughs> would I would I do that to you, dude? Come on, we're like we're like best friends. Come on. That's what I always thought. I thought you were just being nice, but now now I know that we were we are legitimately best friends and yeah. um being yeah, best friends just... i think you will truthfully tell me should i take this bite of toast and vegemite with butter underneath it or has it been sitting oh, too yeah. long to where i should probably just not uh, not bother with it no, no no i think you're still good i think you're still good oh, honestly right, i'm gonna go for so it of, yeah, it's the amount of butter involved that's that's what you're looking at So while I chew this and digest, Eddie, do you have anything else to add before we uh, say farewell to our buddy Morgan here? Well, the last time I was playing a video, I went and I found the only bread type substance we had in the house, which is an English muffin. And I got that toasted and uh, a little bit all of butter right, in there as well. Right. So I think I will be trying <laughs> Vegemite the real way as well as you, Webby. You so I'll admit, I'll so admit that was, that was not bad. I'll admit that was not bad. I, I would consider oh. eating toast with butter and a very light, a very light layer of Vegemite um, any more than what I had now. And I would probably um, not be feeling so well. But um, what I just had just now, it's, it's not bad. I, I don't mind. Um, like uh, every once in a while, I get in the mood for some salty snacks. Like I'll, I'll have, I, I say like once a year, I'll get in the, uh, the mood to get anchovies on my mm. pizza. Um, so maybe once a year, I will uh, get in the mood to have some uh, some toast and butter and Vegemite. Good man. All right, maybe. Oh my God, we could totally do this. We'll do a once a year toast Vegemite uh, Eddie Webby podcast, and we'll we'll make it a tradition. On this day, this is going to be our anniversary. What's today? All right, like somewhere yeah. In let's February, let's mark right? this date. Yeah, February mark something. February sixth. Yep, February sixth. Yeah. Put it on yeah. your calendars, everybody. Um, this a new holiday and tradition just started. <laughs> Vegemite Day. This is it. So, like yeah, it's like a festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now my wow. question is: Does uh does Fosters need to be involved? I is that going to be a requirement? So. Yeah. Okay, good. We can probably, thank God. We can probably let them go. <laughs> my recommendation um, is we was... find another Australian brewery. And I looked. I looked at the total wines nearby, and they didn't have anything. But they're out there, and you yeah. can get them in America. They're out there. So yeah, you might be able to find Coopers. I mm -hmm. think you guys would like Coopers. Um, I think they have they have a lager and I think they have a pale ale. Um, it, yeah, it's a nice clean beer. But other than that, yeah, you'd have to import. Um, that might get a little expensive, but yeah. now I don't, I don't want to totally crap on Fosters. Like, it, it, I don't want to totally crap on Fosters. If you like Budweiser or Bud Light, Fosters is a, a totally legit option out there. Mm. Um. But for people like yes. us with a with a good palate, it's maybe not our cup oh. of tea <laughs> or a cup of beer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you went there. I, I don't need to. Know. <laughs> but uh, oh man, seriously, Morgan, uh, we cannot thank you enough. This has been such a fun night. I wish we could uh, talk for three more hours, but um, unfortunately, I think it is. Uh, it's about that time where we uh, say farewell. Um, but we do want to give you the chance to say uh, anything you want. If there's anything you haven't said tonight that you want to get off your chest, now is your time to do so. 
Let me get uh right. Well. Yeah, I probably should have planned that, shouldn't I? Jeez. <laughs> no, nah, I mean I thought <laughs> uh, what about coach is, me? Do you want to say anything else? I, anything else about coach me? <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, why not? Um I hadn't planned on it, but uh you know, I'll just bring up my phone at a pre-orchestrated script that I wrote. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, the, the Coach Me Pickleball um, site, for me, it's been a huge part of my life in the last year and a half, two years. Not so much in terms of giving me a, a focus point you know, on coaching, but to help me f kind of, it helps me think. It helps me when, when, I, when I know I have to write um, scripts to perform on camera it takes me so much time honestly i i can write a three minute script but it might take me two months to do it because i look at it and i read it and i again and again and again and i can't stop trying to perfect it and there is no perfection but it's been so much fun to to spend so many 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 hours trying to figure out you know what kind of thing i can say to the public um and how i need to qualify it and what's right what's wrong what's a gray area um how i can explain things i think so it's been um i hope people like it i love it i once in a while i'll watch a video that i know i'm gonna have to kind of almost rehearse and and say to a client coming up uh, on the court uh, but now I can often just <laughs> give them a, a card and try and get them to to sign up. Um, so I, I'm able to coach more people, you know, through the power of the uh, the old electronic intra web. Um, so it's been yeah, it's been so much fun working with Steve and getting this off the ground. And we're we're really happy. We've got so many subscribers. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they're all happy. And I think we'll be putting out another video next week. It's exciting times. Um, oh, I'm oh I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a video on paddle taps. How much fun is that gonna be? Literally, yeah. like the unwritten laws of paddle tapping. Ah, I'm excited about that one. Awesome, very nice. You may not have really um, thought about what your paddle taps are really doing <laughs> to your partner. Mm. Interesting. Uh, definitely needed to mm. check that out. Um, one thing um, that I I learned about you tonight that i never really realized before is that you literally wear your heart on your sleeve because i is that isn't that a heart on your shirt like on your sleeve right there oh, wrong side. <laughs> I've got the wrong side. <laughs> um it's kind of i don't know it's actually well it's not exactly where uh, well, sleeveish sleeveish yes it's, it's close to I, I guess i wear my heart close to my sleeve yeah. <laughs> There we go. Nice. I just, I just, no, I just noticed that after this, yeah. <laughs> this whole evening, I didn't just even notice the that. heart until just, yeah. until just now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a really nice, this is a Trina Turk shirt. I, um, I'm a big fan of Trina Turk. It's a place on El Paseo. They also, they are not paying me to say that, but it's a really good shop. You, you, you can get some great stuff there. And, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I'm an emotional guy. I'm a sensitive guy. You gotta wear your heart close to your sleeve. Yes. <laughs> yeah, wearing it close to your sleeve is is way more meaningful than on your sleeve. Like I feel like way too many people wear it on their sleeve, close to your sleeve. It looks that way. Is where yeah, it's they at. took the cliche pretty seriously. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. But yeah, yeah seriously, this has been, been uh, this has been so much fun. Super fun. I can't wait till uh, February 6th of uh, 2021 where we do this all over again. <laughs> Excellent. We could make it like a, isn't Groundhog Day February 2nd? Something like that. We can make uh, it I an do, Eddie, I do believe Eddie so. Morgan yep. Groundhog situation where we try and predict yes. the uh, the future of Pickleball. Oh, I like See if we it. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. That That is happening. That will happen. So... Uh, if we don't Boom. see you before then, we will we will definitely see you a year from today. <laughs> All right. I'm marking the day and putting it on my Google calendar thing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, yeah, thank, thank you very much. Have a great night. No worries. You too, mate. Take it easy. Thanks, All Mark. right, see ya. Cheers. Oh, man.
what what an awesome guest for milestone episode number 60. Yeah, that was great. Covered some amazing topics. Obviously, Morgan, he's such a good guy. He has uh, just such a great personality. He's so good for the sport. But man, Webby, you know how I'm kind of a I'm a little bit of a nerd, a little bit of a sci-fi nerd, kind of a physics nerd. When he started talking about time travel, yeah. I was like, oh, man, thank God I wasn't doing the interview because we probably would have kept him on here for at least two more hours going down that rabbit hole. Oh man, it was so it was so hard not to keep that going. I just <laughs> yeah. he he had somewhere he needed to be, so we needed yeah. to make sure we ended at a decent time. But yeah, I could easily spoke with him about that and many other things for a couple more hours easily, without a doubt. That's right. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's that? How's that Vegemite sitting right now? <laughs> I'm okay so far. I think I really think the uh, the mule beer. Like whenever I drink like ginger ale or ginger beer type drinks i feel like it really does help settle my stomach down so i think yeah i think that saved me are you uh are you not feeling too good right now well i think i might have had a little bit more than you i had like a couple spoonfuls full and uh yeah <laughs> yeah I can, it's like sitting in my gut like a rock right oh now, man to be honest with you but um, oh I can, yeah i can't imagine doing what you did this the spoonful <laughs> like i mine was on crackers and toast so it wasn't too horrible but spoons like spoonfuls like you did yeah i'd probably probably be hurting right now it, it really I, I like the taste of it it's got a very uh sultry is that the right no what's that what's the term i'm looking for um, um savory savory it's a very savory uh i could see this yeah like on a nice piece of warm sourdough bread fresh out of the oven with a little yeah. bit of butter and this, um, or like on cheese, I think I would really like this. I, I honest to God, I think that I'm going to end up starting to eat this a lot more. It's good. Yeah, to be honest, I, I didn't mind it that much. Like the first cracker I had and the piece of toast I had, both very good. I, I would eat it again. Um, but the second cracker that I had where I had that big glob of it on there, that was not very good. <laughs> that was yeah. not good at all. <laughs> A little wow. bit too much. You got to just make sure you uh, get a. Yeah. You just got to be smart with the uh, the amount that you put on uh, whatever it is you're eating. That's right. But that was good stuff. Awesome interview with Morgan. Yeah, fun time. But uh, don't go anywhere, everybody. We've got a couple more great things to show you guys, and uh, one of those things is my training with DJ Howard tonight. We have part six to play. And I say we go ahead and roll that right now. So I would not move in on that ball. Why not? Because um, you hear you hear people say, "Get to the line, right. get to the line," but at what expense? So receive the ball when the ball is traveling to you. Right. While the ball is traveling to your opponent, recover, but you don't want to recover too far forward if they're going to rip that ball. Right. Yeah. So if you hang it up, you're better to wait. Yeah. Give yourself a little time, and then when you get a better one down in my red zone, that's the time to take advantage. Yeah, makes sense. Okay? Yep. So you've got to measure how good your drop is to determine how good or how far up you can get. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, if you get it down, don't wait, right? But if you keep it high, you can't afford to rush out. Right. That's why people are afraid of no man's land. It's really not no man's land. You're just transition there. Right. I mean, if you think about how close this is, you know, if you're halfway up, you know, you're only 15 feet away from the net. It's only 22 feet away from me. It's right. not that far. Right. Uh, you really shouldn't have to be afraid of that unless you're hanging it up. Yeah. Make sense? Yep. So that area of the court itself, nothing to really be afraid of, unless you're just hanging up high. And then all of a sudden, it's difficult. But that's the difficult part, is trying to handle this high ball that's coming fast to your feet. It's not so much position that's the problem. There you go. Good, you earned your way in. You feel the difference? Oh yeah. I can't hurt you. There's n nothing I could do to hurt you. If I try to hit that fast, watch what happens. If I try to hit that fast, now all of a sudden I'm out, right. or that's hanging right up in your green zone. Yeah. You're gonna cram it down my throat. <laughs> right. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna hit it down, which means I have to hit it slower. 
Yep. I can't hit it fast and low. From here. It's impossible. The math doesn't work. Good. Uh. Yes. Right. At least now we're neutral, huh? Great. So you basically won that psychological battle right from the start. You were at a disadvantage. You got it up to neutral. That's a win. Psychologically. Right. Okay, emotionally. Yeah. You just took away my advantage. That should make you feel pretty good. Oh yeah. And then I'm like, ah, rats. I, I wish I could still have the advantage. Right. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of a moral victory in and of itself. Right? You still gotta win the point. Right? right. But you should feel good about that. Oh yeah, definitely. I like to say posture trumps position. Okay. Right now, yeah. do we wanna be in a good position? Of course. Right. But it's better to be in a really good solid posture. Yeah. Even if I'm not in the exact position I want to be in. For sure. Right? Because I can yeah. get to the position eventually. Right. right. I'll make that small sacrifice. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Good, good, good. So was it worth it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, good. it took you one extra shot to get up there. Right. But yeah, definitely. But you're more control. Absolutely. More control. You got better placement of the ball and it yeah. allows you to come in. Oh, for sure. If it takes you two shots, what if it takes you three shots? Oh well. Yeah, as long as you have control. <laughs> right. And like you said, good posture. And right. So that, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Be able to control this ball where you want. Deny your opponent any opportunity to hurt you. Yeah. Right? So once again, some great advice from DJ Howard. And that goes along with something that you and I have actually been talking about quite a bit in the last few episodes is uh, going against the bad advice we got when we first started playing, and that is rushing to the line. And that advice that DJ gave me was so valuable um, to just make sure you're in the right, like have the right posture. Don't rush to the line. If it takes you an extra shot or two to get up there, make sure you get up there at the right time. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah, just last night I was playing in my community and my drop shot went a little high. Not not red light high, but yellow light high. And the person, our opponent, it was right in their forehand wheelhouse. But my partner decided to go sprinting towards that line and she just <laughs> got him right in the foot as he was running. It's like, yep, bad advice. Yep. Yeah, just do not rush to that line. Get nope. there at the right time. And uh, you'll be in much better shape. That's right. Good video. So there's uh, another uh, another very special thing we have to show everybody, and that involves a special match that's going to be coming up later this month. Uh, that involves myself and this one guy. Have you ever heard of somebody named Ben Johns? Ben, ben Johnson. Who's who's Ben Johnson? Uh, it's not Johnson. It's Ben Johns. He's this kid that he's really ben, making a name for himself in the pickleball world. Yeah, Ben uh, Benji Ons. What? <laughs> yeah, Benji Ons. Benji Ons. Okay. Benji oh, ben. Ons. Ah, Benjamin Johns. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, Benjamin. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, this actually the the ball got rolling on this match quite a while ago, and uh, I feel like instead of me blabbing on about it, why don't we go ahead and play? A quick video that kind of sets it up perfectly. Uh, Webby of Eddie and Webby is watching, and uh, you know Ben, I confronted you at uh, TOC about this, in that you told <laughs> yes. Webby you could kick his ass at ping pong using a spoon, and then I was like, I <laughs> Whoa, mean, "Wait a minute, wait a minute!" I think this got out of hand. I yeah. think yeah, you were just Lee like, Waters on. originally was talking me up big time. Speaking of Ben. At nationals this past year, there was a ping pong table, and Ben was beating Anna Lee at ping pong with his cell and phone. He was using a cell phone as a well. <laughs> We also heard that he was a champion by using a spatula when he, he also told us he's one using a spatula and a spoon. 
Yeah. No way. So, <laughs> wow. Multi- a spoon. <laughs> ben, if you're watching, I challenge you to a game of ping pong where you use a spoon and I'll use a ping pong paddle. <laughs> yeah. Let's make that happen. <laughs> that might level the playing field a little bit. Okay, that's going a little far. I've, I haven't beaten many people with a spoon. A spatula. Just a spatula. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 told, I told Webby, I will play you with a cell phone because that's kind of someone one of the objects I prefer. I really like a, a nice coaster, a nice stone coaster. Yeah, I really yeah love that those, would be nice. We'll see how it goes. Nice. Um, and, you know, I'm feeling kind of confident because I've seen his pickleball game, <laughs> and I'm not throwing any shade here, Webby, but Ooh. I'm just saying I'm feeling confident. Hey, this, all. <laughs> hey, this is the no smoke pickleball show. You're supposed to throw shade, right? So yeah, if you need exactly. to throw shade, this, shade is, is this is where you throw the shade. All right, consider it thrown. <laughs> yes. I, the gloves Webby. have been thrown down. Done. <laughs> so there you have it. Ben Johns said he would play me in a game of ping pong where – uh, he originally said he would use a cell phone, but he prefers a stone coaster. So I want to make sure that he is comfortable in this match and has his weapon of choice. So we actually went ahead and had this custom stone coaster made right mm. here. Now, that's right. This is the uh, top of the line best stone you can find coaster with Eddie and Webby on it. And this is what. Mr. Ben Johns will be using, and I will use a regular ping pong paddle. And he is extremely confident that he will still beat me. And even though I haven't played ping, ping pong in a couple of years, I feel like, I mean, come on, this is a, a tiny little, it's a tiny little coaster. I mean, I feel like he's got to have at least some kind of a disadvantage. I know he's Ben Johns and all, but I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Am I, mean, I still o- in over my head? <laughs> he, I don't know yeah. if it's over your head, but to me, it's like, if you take a master carpenter and you give him only a hammer and nails, but you give us like a nail gun and all the tools in the world, he's still probably going to build a better house than us. Yeah, that's probably true. But, but I don't know. You never know. I mean, I, I, I don't know that I've played ping pong against you in years. So I know you played for a little while. Who knows? You never know. That's the thing is you never know until you're in it. Right, exactly. But to be honest, uh, because of uh, because of where I work, I'm actually a lot better ping pong player now than I was back in high school because yeah. I, I I dabbled in, in ping pong during my lunch breaks and stuff uh, for a couple of years. So, I mean, I've got I've got some decent ping pong experience under my belt. Like I said, I haven't played in a couple of years. Um, I'm hoping it's like riding a bike to where I just don't forget. Um, I'll definitely need, need to get some practice. That that match is going to happen um, while I am down in Florida for the uh, Florida Grand Slam tournament. Yeah, we haven't and, even uh, talked about that yet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we were supposed to talk about it before, but we have not talked about it. Should we talk about it now or should we wait? Until hey, the cat's next out of the episode? bag, man. We might as well. <laughs> <laughs> might as well. This is episode number 60. This right. is a milestone episode. I mean, we've already had an epic episode. Might as well add to it. Yeah, so uh, coming up at the end of February at Peak Performance Pickleball Academy in lovely Bonita Springs, Florida, which is uh, the home of Chad Edwards and Simone Jarjim. They're having the Florida Grand Slam Tournament. And Webby is coming down for it. Oh, yeah. That's right. I will be down in Florida uh, for the first time since last year at the uh, when we were together for the East Naples Winter Classic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be down there for the Florida Grand Slam Tournament. That's right. I'm going to be playing men's doubles with my partner, Mark. I'll be playing mixed doubles with Nicole Miller. And right now I'm signed up for singles, but we might be, there might be some scheduling conflicts there. So I don't know if I'll be playing singles yet, but I'm excited to give singles a try if I get a chance to play. Uh, and Webby, right. what are you going to be playing in? Um, so I will only be playing in one division. And unfortunately, it will not be in men's doubles with Eddie. Um, but as he already said, he already has another partner. Um, but I will be there for mixed doubles. And I will be playing with Kim Bashrush, uh, somebody I have never played with before. Um, but I reached out on Facebook to see if anybody was interested in teaming up with me for this tournament. Uh, she was kind enough to uh, let me know that she needs a partner and she would happily play with me. 
And I've got to tell you, uh, from what I have seen on the social media, I think I have a really good partner, and I think we have a really good chance. And if the stars align properly, Kim and I will play against Eddie and Nicole during the tournament. And if that happens, that will officially become Eddie versus Webby part six. Yes. And this is going to be interesting because if we face off against each other leading up to the quarterfinals, semifinals, anything like that, that will be the Eddie versus Webby match. However, that's right. If we meet again in any of those final matches, the belt is right back up on the line again. So that's right. In theory, we could have the shortest run <laughs> of anybody holding on to the Eddie versus Webby championship belt at that yep. tournament. That's right. So if we see each other in like round one or two, whoever wins that will become the new holder of the championship belt and Kyle Yates paddle. But this belt and that paddle. <laughs> So that part's not important, but uh, yeah. Anyways, if whoever is holding the belt and uh, and paddle, if our teams happen to meet again in a medal match, the belt and paddle are once again up for grabs, and the winner of that match is the one who goes home with the belt and paddle. That's right. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be a good time. Guys, if you're just looking and, you know, maybe you live in the mid in the Midwest right now. And I know that there was a bunch of snow today in Michigan. Guess what, guys? Newsflash. Your weather sucks. Do you want to know where the weather doesn't suck in February? That's down here in Florida. So if you're looking for a getaway, you're looking to play in a tournament, registration is still open. Come on down because I'm telling you, if you look at the pros that are signed up to play at that tournament, it's some of the top players in the world who are going to be there. So not only do you get a chance to play at an amazing facility, which by the way, they have air conditioning indoors and nice bathrooms and stuff. You also can stick around for that Saturday and Sunday and watch some of the top pro matches as well. That's right. And for the first time in quite a while, Eddie and Webby will both be together and there's a very good chance that we will have a new stash of koozies with the Eddie and Webby logo on it because those were a huge hit at the Beer City Open last year. So who knows? Maybe we'll have those. Uh, don't know. You never know. <laughs> that would be pretty cool if we did. Yeah, um, I just I just thought about that on the spot right this yeah. second. So maybe it'll happen. I could easily make that happen. If you guys want koozies, let us know. We'll have koozies. That's right. Real quick comment here from Joe Parisi. He said, scheduling conflict sounds like a bailout. You got to play singles. Uh, Joe, I 100% want to. It might actually come down to a live streaming conflict. So it might come down to bringing the pro singles matches to you guys or me playing. And personally, I know which one I would rather pick, and that would be to help bring the matches to you guys. So that's the scheduling conflict I'm referring to. Hope that gotcha. Happens. Yeah, I would... I would uh, I'd probably make the same choice. I would uh, gladly yeah. uh, rather live stream the pro singles matches versus play myself in a singles tournament. But Joe, if you want to if you want to practice, I'm always open for practicing singles. And I know you could <laughs> you could run me around that court and get my cardio up. So uh, I would definitely enjoy any practice you want between now and then. That'd be fun. So I've got one more thing I want to talk about. It's something I teased at the beginning of the episode, and that is um, our most epic giveaway that we've ever done on the Eddie and Webby podcast. Yeah. And, oh, man, like it's uh, it kind of saddens me because we're going to have to depart or uh, part ways with something that really means a lot to me. Uh, luckily, we have... A duplicate of it, so that <laughs> yeah, it's not, we still have another one. Is that gonna be? Yeah, at least I'll still have one in my possession. But hold on one second, I'm gonna go grab it. Okay. So remember, this is a giveaway, so, and, right? <laughs> that's right. And uh, for those watching on video, um, hopefully you didn't see what I just grabbed, because <laughs> <but, laughs> <laughs> it was directly behind me. I didn't plan this part out very well. But anyways, 
If you want a chance to win this paddle right here, which is a very limited edition customized paddle tech paddle with Eddie and Webby on it, two different types of paddle faces for the price of one. And this is the old paddle tech logo. This is something that you cannot ever get made again. All you got to do is be a YouTube subscriber of ours to be eligible. And uh, something needs to happen before we do the contest. And we're actually getting pretty close to that. And it's a, it's a goal of ours that we set during our final episode of 2019. And that goal was for the Eddie and Webby channel to reach 1,000 subscribers. Once that happens, we are going to have a contest where one of our YouTube subscribers will be receiving this Eddie and Webby Paddle Tech Paddle. That's right. And let me tell you something. You guys are going to want it. It's an incredible paddle. It's got two different faces on it. It's got the old Paddle That's Tech right. logo. It's, it's incredible. And here's the thing, right? You can go and sign up for 10 different YouTube accounts and subscribe to our channel if you wanted to. That's right. That would give you yeah, 10 Yeah, all you entries. have to do... Yeah, really, all you need, like, just create a different Gmail account. If you have, like, different Gmail accounts, you can create a whole new YouTube account for any Gmail account, and, and you can subscribe. So we're just, we're giving you yep. ways to uh, increase your odds. I mean, you, you don't have to do that, but, I mean, if you want to increase your odds, just <laughs> do that. Hey, Webby, does it cost anything to subscribe to a YouTube channel? You know what? It, this might blow people's minds, but no, it does not cost one single cent to subscribe to a YouTube channel. Yes. I, I have found out recently that that is something that the pickleball community is unclear about. There is no cost to you. This isn't a TV subscription. All you're doing is you're nope. basically letting YouTube know that you want to be part of a group that when new Eddie Webby content come out, they know about it and can keep track of it. You can also click yep. the little bell icon. That way, anytime we go live or a new video comes out, you get notified immediately as well. Yep, that is exactly right. So yeah, it's not like a magazine subscription. You do not have to pay anything whatsoever. Um, just it's uh, ignore the the old school mentality when it comes to the word subscription. All it That's is right. is a simple click of the button on your computer or phone. You go to YouTube. And click, click subscribe, and, uh, and you're subscribed. But yeah, that's all it takes. All you have to yep. do is be a subscriber, and you will be in the running. Um, we don't know exactly how we're going to announce it or do the drawing yet. But as soon as we reach 1,000 subscribers, we will be sure to let it be very well known and very clear uh, who the winner is. That's right. Subscribe. And uh, we appreciate you guys very much for that. Right, Webby? That is correct. Yeah, you have you have no idea how much it means to us when we see the subscribe number go up. Um, it just it just all it does is it shows us that what we're doing actually uh, means something to people. People enjoy what we're doing. Uh, we invest a lot of time and effort into this. We love what we're doing. Um, but it does it it it. I don't know about you, but it makes me feel good when I see that people actually subscribe and are interested in what we're doing. I totally agree. And it's funny. I was actually looking at some common YouTube statistics out there. And we get a lot of views on our channel, but only like, I don't know, 2% of our views are from subscribers. And the average is yeah. something like 15 to 16% of views are from subscribers across YouTube channels. <laughs> I don't know that number exactly, but it was somewhere around there. So I think in pickleball yeah, in general, it's, it's, a, it's a very skewed statistic. Yeah, it's funny you say that because actually just last night I clicked on the analytics button on the uh, on our YouTube page and it showed me the percentage of uh, views that we have uh, in regards to how many of those views are subscribers. And it, it blew my mind yep. how few are subscription related. It, it seriously blew my mind. Like they, it, like thousands and thousands of people watch our channel that aren't subscribed. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Hey, what are you going to do, though? Yeah. Uh, well, we appreciate it, guys. So go out there, subscribe, get in the ring for that paddle, and we appreciate you. 
Oh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, this has been episode number 60, milestone mm-hmm. number 60. Um, again, we had an epic guest with Morgan Evans. That was so much fun having him on. I could listen to him talk for hours and uh, I can't wait until we have him on again. I sense a little man and... crush from you to him. Is that, you know, accurate? you know, when we were, uh, when we were together at the beer city open last year, I do feel like there was uh, quite a bit of chemistry going. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You got to fight John Davidson for him though. Apparently. Yeah. Oh man. John Davidson. He, uh, yeah, he's got uh he's definitely some major competition when it comes to winning the uh, the affection of Morgan Evans. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Um real quick, I did want to point out one comment here. And this is from Andre Andre Paul. And he said Esther is the tax lady in Buffalo. She's all over TV and he's referring to Esther Gullius who said here in Buffalo, great job guys. Uh and yes, the tax lady, Esther Gullius, actually is my aunt. She technically is my oh, nice. wife's aunt. But uh, yeah, she's famous in Buffalo. So that's cool, Andre, that, uh, that you know of Esther Gullius, the tax lady. A very nice. Yes. If you haven't checked out EG Tax for all your tax needs, they haven't paid for this. They're not sponsoring, but definitely check out EG Tax. I feel like we've promoted a lot of companies tonight. And none of them are sponsors. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Honestly, I am because, too. Because I, am I too. feel like it's it's just coming from a legitimate place where all we're trying to do is just share stuff that we like. And so I think I think it's cool. yep. Yeah, and that's yep. what that's what, something we've always been passionate about. If we care about a product, whether they're sponsoring us or not, we are going to share the love. That's right. Just like Vegemite, not Fosters. <laughs> that's I'm right. Not, I'm, I'm not <laughs> yeah promoting yeah. Fosters, but Vegemite. Uh, what, d- depending on how I feel tomorrow morning, as long as I don't die tonight, <laughs> right? then I will be promoting their product as well. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Hashtag not a sponsor. Yep. Cool. Um, anything else we want to talk about, Webby? I know we're, we're it's late. It's really late. Oh, man. I, uh, I've got a bunch of random topics that would be suitable for uh, thinking around, but I don't think I'm going to bring those up tonight. I'll save those for the next time we have an episode or possibly for the next dinking around. So I think, I think tonight uh, it was such a great night. And I think now it's probably, probably a good time to say farewell. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. And guys, this has been episode number 60, which means there are 60 of you out there still watching right now. And guess what, Webby? What? We appreciate them. We like them. We love Mm -hmm. them. You guys Mm -hmm. are the best. Thank you so much for sticking around. We definitely appreciate it. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. So yeah.